And you guys have been friends for how long? Forever. <laughs> 10 years. We met in grad school at Jefferson. Wow. Has it been 10? Yeah, yes. it's been 10 we years. We were in the same grad program. She's the only one that didn't look like a fucking loser, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I was like the only person that I was like, this This is weird. That was real. She you, ran you up know. to me. Yeah. The type of people that sometimes become therapists. Yeah, I know. Where'd you go to grad school? I went in LIU. What? How was it? Um, it was fun. I had a blast. Yeah. Are you from New York originally? I was born and raised in Haiti, but oh, I've okay. lived in New York since I, I was 14. Oh, and okay. I just moved to Jersey last year. How's that transition? I'm loving it. Really? So I moved from Philly to the suburbs, and I feel like I had whiplash, cultural whiplash is what <laughs> yes, I would call it. Yes, it's very quiet. Things close by 7, 7 p.m., <laughs> but it's exactly what I needed for where I am in life. Okay. So my let's... home office, I'm chilling. I, right. I can come. You know what? You know what's okay. funny? You say things close by 7 p.m. I was in New York the other week, and it was like, I think it was like three o'clock in the afternoon, and someone was like, "Will you go grab me a coffee?" I think it was like my sister-in-law. I was like, "Is it still open?" <laughs> they laughed in my face. Yeah. Yeah, because it is. It is like a very different experience. You're always hustling, and I yes. needed rest, yes. right? And I'm a father of two now. I have two un under two jesus highly do not recommend very <laughs> ghetto okay are you I, okay today i am because i'm not home right. <laughs> that's why you, know you why drove in that's drive. why you was oh, driving yes. in Come yes 100 percent. 100 so yeah makes so okay. much sense i have now. a three-year-old how's that going well, I'm tired, but the idea, okay, it was definitely hard to go from zero to one, but I really can't imagine going from one to two, especially having them so close together. So do you have what's considered Irish twins? How kind of. How far are your kids apart? So um, my eldest is two years old. My youngest is about to turn four months. Oh it was a pandemic, guys. Like, right? You, what was I supposed to what do? What else were you supposed to do? Exactly. Right. I saw well, everything on Netflix. Okay, yes. let's talk about this. Well, let's talk about that. But I think that's a great topic because a lot of couples would not say that the pandemic was helpful and had them have more kids. A lot of couples think the pandemic fucking killed their marriage. Oh, yeah. You, and their sex life. Let's, yes. Yeah, let's talk about it because you, we have you here today, mm-hmm. our amazing couple specialist, our a, special. affair yeah, yeah. and recovery expert, everything that's amazing about you, Mac. So let's even just talk from personal experience. Mm-hmm. What the fuck do you do to make your marriage work? Man, I think the pandemic was the greatest thing that ever happened to my relationship. I got to hang out with my best friend all day. On the professional side, I also got booked like I've never been booked (laughs) before. A lot of couples were struggling. You are forced to remain in a (laughs) four-by-four apartment with someone that you really don't know. And you realize, oh, I actually don't like you. Yeah. I no longer have that break of leaving for work for eight hours and come and coming back home and just talking about my dad and going to sleep. No, now we got to coexist for 24 yeah. hours. That's mm-hmm. a lot for a lot of people. Yeah, like the avoidance mechanism of mm-hmm. going to work was taken away. Correct. Right? So you only had to interact with your partner like a few hours at night, yeah. a little bit in the morning, and then that was completely taken away. Yeah. So on average... Couples with children only spend 10% of their time together. In the pandemic, you're spending 100% <laughs> of your time together. I've taken out the garbage at least 12 times in one day. <laughs> like, I'm going to just take out the garbage. I'm going to just take out the garbage. Just like one piece of trash you're yeah. taking out every time. Yes, because you needed to create that space nice. or that room to breathe or etc. But overall, I think me and my wife were in a much better place than we've ever been before it's amazing did you have to like create different boundaries like how did you adjust to that as a relationship how did you and did you bring your like clinical skills (laughs) into your relationship and also how do you do that in a way that you can teach us to do it as well (laughs) and let's also add in having a small child in 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 in, in that time period as well right we're first time parents yeah we're not sleeping right there's not much intimacy due to having a young child um she's breastfeeding i'm bottle feeding we're changing diapers we're creating shifts i have to work my business is picking up she's not working so it was a lot 
but what we all always did is our foundation were always strong we have the pro- pro- proper rituals so every morning i wake up make her breakfast and bring her coffee and ask her how can i make you feel love today and vice versa mm-hmm. so it gave me a blueprint of exactly what she needed for for each 24 hours and that made life so easy for me because i know exactly what i need to do to make you feel loved you know what you need to do to make make me feel loved now it's a matter of choosing to do so now a lot of one of the things i found specifically with women Mm -hmm. is they sometimes really struggle to say that need right so for your wife to also be able to be attuned enough with herself to say what i need today is, is help with um, you washing the pump mm-hmm. or you taking out the diaper catheter, any of these things, or for a background, whatever. Like, I have found that often sometimes people are not able to actually be in tune with themselves enough to know how to request it. How would you recommend people like figure that out? Because what you're saying is fucking brilliant. Yeah. Beautiful. Some people might say, but sometimes they just say, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then they resent their partner later because they didn't read their fucking mind and it's your fault. And you, you lost a game that I never said, told you the rules to. At, at the end of all of my sessions with all of my couples, I ask them, tell your partner three or five things that you need to fill up this week. And it's very common that most women say, I don't need anything. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. And then I tell them, I want you to allow your husband or your partner to be present for you. You owe them that right and you owe it to yourself to letting them know exactly what you need like you said we can't read your mind mm-hmm. right we need to know and 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 it's also a matter of being comfortable inside in your needs like if you can't tell me what you need now what about when we get into the bedroom are you going to be able to tell me what works and what don't work what you need and what you don't need no, that's why we got all these women faking orgasms. Right? I think that that's a, right. I mean, I think that's a very real thing. And then they say, "Well, I hate my sex life," and right. I was like, "Well, have you ever taught anyone different?" And I don't need to just put this on women. I just specifically work with women. That's my specialty, mm-hmm. and it's the number one thing that I hear of. He doesn't see me. He doesn't know what to do. This doesn't work. But also, women have been taught so much to push down their needs mm-hmm. that they don't even have the verbalization skills sometimes to say. I really actually do need you to sit here and lay with me naked. I really do need, you know, A, B, and C. Right. Or or sometimes they don't even know what they need, right? That there's no connection to That's themselves. True. That- that's true. And so for for them to be able to connect also to what is it that I need, right? And maybe that takes time with them spending time with themselves, whether it's spending time with themselves emotionally or spending time with themselves sexually. Yeah. And, and, and to pig, piggyback off what you said, yeah. a lot of times it has to do with communication skills. I'm going to go on the record and say 99.99999% of couples do not know how to communicate. (laughs) They know how to talk, but they don't know how to communicate. So a lot of time, the women have learned that when I say what I need or when I express myself, I'm not heard, I'm not validated, or it's not welcome. So therefore, I just suppress my own needs in hopes that if I don't say it, it won't cause a fight. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of men don't know how to respond to a woman's need the same way that a lot of women don't know how to respond to an emotional and a vulnerable man even though we all say that's what we want but in reality when your man starts crying in front of you and they start showing those emotions your societal conditioning force you forces you to see them differently Mm -hmm. and you can even deal with that Okay. Well, and for so many women, right, like their, their husband finally comes to terms, has this emotional moment, and they're like, he was crying, and I, I did nothing, I froze. <laughs> like the amount, and right, and what every one of us are looking for in those vulnerable moments, it's got to be pure love, nurturing, gentleness. Yeah. And, but we have such a discomfort level on both sides. And it, it pushes men back into their shells right like yeah, if, machismo right machismo of like well i shouldn't have done that because if you're getting rejected by your partner right when you are being very vulnerable with them then it shuts them back down shuts all of us back down when you are vulnerable and you get shut down by your partner yes. and so it's like well why would i do that again and that's the number one cause of infidelity mm. that right there so ding, ding, talk. ding. Let's get okay. into that. <laughs> because we got so many questions about it. So I, I, right see. Into, I don't want to get right into um, follower questions, but mm-hmm. let's start a little bit about, tell us how you 
think about infidelity, how you speak about infidelity. Like, give us your Macism. <laughs> that was so beautiful. Ooh, I like that. Beautifully said. My Macism. Yes. So, and fidelity, a fair recovery, right, has been one of my most requested services for the past two years. Mm. I would say currently, I would say 70% of my caseload has to do with a fair recovery. Wow. And what I've realized is that we don't understand what causes infidelity. We have this idea that most men just want sex. So they look outside of their relationship for, to fulfill their sexual urges. Am I not having enough sex with my husband? Am I not doing all of the sexual things that they need to do? But 70% of the time and infidelity is, is due to an unmet need being present in the relationship. Mm. That's when I break down, when I'm being vulnerable, when I'm telling you what I need and you're not properly responding or creating a safe space for us to talk about those things. That's when I've learned to suppress my feelings and my emotions because it's not being recognized. When I express myself and when I do talk about what, what I need, it causes a fight. So in order to save the relationship or to maintain the peace, I've learned to push it under the rug. But that only lasts for so long because it's human nature that eventually I'm going to find someone else where I can share these things with, right? So what starts out as a friendly conversation? Now we're spending more time together and just talking. Now we're going out to dinner, but I'm not telling my partner because I don't want to upset them. Mm -hmm. Where I'm not going to tell my partner about my day because I don't feel like they care. Mm -hmm. But I'm calling you right afterward to tell you how my day was, what were my wins and what mm -hmm. were my struggles then eventually I start to wonder how great my life would be if I was just with you. Mm. How much fun we would have together. Now we're finding things we have in common. Oh, Bad Bunny is performing in Brooklyn. Mm. My partner don't like this type of music, so I'll just go with you. Spending more time together, getting closer, emotional vulnerabilities being shared, and we're connecting emotionally, which eventually turned to physical emotions mm -hmm. and that tends to be the process of an infidelity mm -hmm. and it's so interesting too because even as you're describing this process right that um you know the relationship with the affair partner is so separated from all your daily stresses there's such a fantasy involved mm -hmm. in it too which lends itself i can imagine to the appeal of it yeah. as well yeah. And you're getting such an unmet need met in this other relationship. Yes. And at first, you're not doing nothing wrong. I'm just having right. coffee with a friend. Now, now that I know that at 745, we meet at Starbucks. Now, I'm choosing my cologne differently. Mm. I'm dressing better. I'm more excited. I'm looking forward to, to, mm -hmm. to it, right? Coffee turns into lunch. Lunch turns into dinner. I'm still not doing nothing wrong. You're just mm -hmm. a friend. Right. So I, it's those small, simple steps that eventually lead to the ultimate betrayal. But what you're saying is something of like human beings want to feel good and loved. Right. So if yes. I'm spending time with someone who makes me feel appreciated and good like that is like it, it's a very normal humanistic thing. It's not evil. It's not right. Like we sometimes make into people that are um, the affair person like that th they're bad or evil. Right. But typically it's because. I want to feel loved and valued in life and I'm not getting it somewhere else or I'm not processing it, any of these things. But I would imagine people listening, what you must have to deal with is the people that um, were the person who were cheated on mm -hmm. or had the affair on, over those people listening, is that they're starting to probably feel their body clench as you talk about this. Yes. Right? So they're listening to this episode and all of a sudden, you know, they're... they're driving in the car. They're driving in the car, their butthole's a little tighter. <laughs> they feel that tension all of a sudden. They're like, oh, shit, man, it's pretty tight up here. Yeah. Hold, it re hold on to that wheel yeah, real right? tight. Because I don't really want to hear what you're saying. Because right. I want to just be mad at this person. Yes. I want it to all be their fucking fault. And to some degree it is. But because it's still a decision at the end of the day. You mm -hmm. can choose what word or not to, to cheat, right? You have that power, right? So by me citing the cause of it does not remove the causation or, or the responsibility of the cheater. You still chose to betray your vows mm -hmm. and your commitment to your partner. Mm -hmm. And he or she 
is free to feel upset, angry, annoyed, right? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. perfectly okay. But in order to heal, it's a two-part process. Once, one, the, the cheated partner, the person was cheated on, must be able to ask all of their questions to understand. Because mm -hmm. understanding will lead to the insight. And the insight will eventually, possibly, hopefully, correct the behavior. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the sessions is whoever was cheated on has the floor to ask all of their questions. Where did you meet? Where did you guys go? How often? What did you lie about? What time of day or et cetera? But we stay away from questions that may cause more trauma. Mm -hmm. um, was he bigger than me? Mm -hmm. Was she better than me? Did you do this sexual act? How was that performance, right? Because these questions don't help with the understanding. It just helps re-traumatize you. Okay. So I'm going to play referee at that time and say these questions are not allowed because it doesn't help the process. Do you get like a whistle in session? Like a <laughs> <laughs> like that's time a out. Good time move. out. Like time out. <laughs> time out. Not asking that one. Yeah, right. Correct. Right. And and I always set the rules before each session, right? And now the second part of it is once all of these questions I have to understand, now the person that cheated must be also able to express why they cheated, what was missing, what was needed, what was not provided. And who, and their partner has to take that accountability. I realized that I've been neglecting you for the past two years because I've been very focused on my career. Mm -hmm. I realized that I've been <clears throat> not the best husband to you and not helping with the kids to the point that you felt burnt out, mm -hmm. right? So that accountability allows them to rec recognize the cause or the break Okay, so the number one question we got. Talk to me. <laughs> number one question. Multiple people wrote this in, and in the same fucking exactly Can I guess? written way. Yes. Once a cheater, is he always a cheater? A hundred percent. The number one written question is, and I think that's a fear, right? Is it once a cheater, always a cheater? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. I have seen stronger relationships being built after an affair has taken place because mm. it, it's a reality check yeah yo this was not working this is what happened because it was not working mm -hmm. now we both want this so let's take accountability and solidify our commitment to each other in ensuring that we create a healthy relationship just saying i do doesn't mean it's forever right mm -hmm. right we need to say i do to every day choosing to love my partner and show up for my partner the way that they need me to show up, not the way that's the most comfortable for me, right? A lot of times we tend to de devalue the things that we're accustomed to and partners included, right? I'm seeing you, we're married for five years, 10 years, I'm not paying attention to you no more. Mm -hmm. I'm not even trying. Mm -hmm. I'm in automatic mode, I'm, I'm in pilot mode. The relationship is a Tesla. It's driving itself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a, you know, it's a... <laughs> God, it's so painful. It's just it's so, so true. true. It's a fact. Is there, are there any times specifically, like, throughout the life cycle Ooh. that you see yeah. affairs happening the most? <laughs> like, get the dance going, because I feel like that's a, I feel like there's an answer there. Fellas, listen to me for this, because I got y'all right now. Because we, we tend to have this idea that men are, are, are the ones that tend to cheat the most. But in reality, within two to four years of a marriage, most women start thinking about infidelity and may even act up a, upon mm -hmm. it. While a man, he, they usually range from six to eight years. Mm. Wow. That was mind-blowing to me. Yeah. Because I did not expect that. Well, you know what's funny is we always talk about that 70% of divorces are initiated by women. That is fucking insane to me. I could see why. Yeah. Because us men, we get very comfortable yes. very quickly. Oh, it's my wife. Those are her responsibilities, mm -hmm. right? We always hear women must maintain their physique, must dress up in bed, must do all of these things yeah. to maintain their sexiness. While the man has a beer belly, hasn't been to the gym in three years, and for some reason, that's not talked about. Right. right, they're not paying attention. They're not emotionally available for their female partners. Mm -hmm. So a lot of time, most women will initiate the divorce because they're just tired. 
burn out, right? They want better. Is there anything that you would, let's say you have a woman who's two to four years and thinking about, oh, you know, I might want to, you know, dabble in some cheating or (laughs) six to eight years for men. Let's say they're thinking about it. What would you suggest to them? Like, what would you recommend in terms of what their next move is? Do you know what I found very powerful? Labeling the elephant in the room, especially in relationships. Mm -hmm. I had a session um, two nights ago from an infidelity couple, and they both realized, like, through the feedback session, I labeled both of you guys that are unhappy with the quantity and the quality of sex in the relationship. Mm -hmm. The man was baffled. Like, you are? (laughs) I have no idea I thought you just didn't want to have sex with me I thought you just didn't want sex at all She's like no I actually want sex very often But I'm so tired by the end of the day Due to all of the responsibilities That have to take care of that By the end of the night I have no energy for it Mm -hmm. So again Back to your question It's about labeling that Hey I think we're having a problem Where I'm thinking of stepping outside of the relationship because I don't feel wanted, I don't feel validated, I don't feel desired. And is there space for you to hear that as my partner? Correct. Before you jump to mm-hmm. catastrophizing. Or like attack, attacking yes. your partner for even oh, thinking God that. God forbid, God forbid. God, like, how dare thought. you, right. It's like I look at every person that walks down the street. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I don't know, I'm fucking curious. I've been with my husband for fucking 12 years. Right, right? so like, long. I see someone attractive. You're way past like, the two to four mark. I, I, I made it! Um, <laughs> I hope he did you. We'll never know. Um, but, we'll never know. Don't tell me. Uh, but right, like this part of saying that, like it is like human nature also to want to be flirted with, to want to feel attractive. Yes. Like, of course, we want that. Your, your partner is not horrible for having a normal human reaction. And it's such. It's. I feel like it's such a myth that we have myth buster that we have to do. <laughs> That, like, oh, when you meet your person, you're not going to be attracted to anyone else. Who said that? People say that. Shit. Like, oh, you shouldn't be attracted to anyone else. That is ridiculous. I don't know. Probably, like, the Catholic Church. Right. No, 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 no. I'm it's the so self-help curious. culture. Yeah. yeah. I am sick and I'm tired I'm sick and tired them. of being sick and oh tired. Oh, my God. I know. It's, it's this idea that in a relationship, lust don't matter. Right. And that makes no sense to me. Because I lust after my wife, and I let her know every day. <laughs> Listen, I have the Savage Fancy um, membership <laughs> that I get to select what comes in every fifth of the month. Yeah. And when that box comes, I'm like, all right, let's go upstairs. You're going to try everything in front of me. I'm ordering things that I want to see you in. And every three months, I'm like, it's your turn to choose what you want, right? Well, but I like that you're not putting the responsibility on your partner, right? Like, because you said this other thing about, like, this immense amount of pressure that women have in this world, especially when children come in, yeah. right? Breastfeed, take care of them, but don't be too, but don't be too sexy. But you better be fucking sexy enough. You better lose that weight. Oh, don't lose too much weight, right? Like, it's a fucking shit show. As opposed to like, I want to adorn you. Yes. With this item, I want to be with you. I want to lust. Yeah. I love that. My biggest goal was to ensure that her postpartum was a positive experience. So I made sure that uh, the I, minute I we brought... Did I clone this one? Yeah, <laughs> like, how, can you... I get that a lot. <laughs> do, you, do you have a cousin? <laughs> I don't. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so... Uh, but I mean, was this a model thing in your home? How did you... Yeah, how did you, you get to this the point? norm, especially with postpartum. The amount of couples I work with that he was like, well, I don't know. I didn't feel like I could do anything. She's the only one who could breastfeed. She's doing skin to skin. Excuse you? I know. She gets up, I get up. She's breastfeeding, I'm giving her juice to refuel herself. You're hungry, I'm cooking. You do nothing. You are a gem. I don't I don't know if she would agree, but right. I, I'd, well, I'd like sure to think so. Gonna, <laughs> she's going to listen to this episode and be like... <laughs> but there is a part of like, okay, so was that learned or modeled behavior? How did you... How did you... Research. I'm very big into research. Mm-hmm. I'm always reading. I'm always watching some something on YouTube, and I'm always trying to think ahead, right? I'm looking at other women that have g- 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 given birth and what their experiences are. Plus, I see a lot of couples. So a lot of time, I hear the bullshit that they do, 
and I go to my wife and I apologize. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How can I be better? Hey, do we have this problem? Like, so it allows me to be very introspective. So when after she gave birth, right, one one of the first thing I did was the biggest reason that most women develop um, depression or anxiety postpartum is to is due to the fact that they feel they're inadequate or they're not doing a good enough job. So within our circle of families, I know my mom, her mom, grandmas, and et cetera, all these women, right, that are about to walk in and try to tell her on how to be the best mom or et cetera, I got ahead of that. So as you walk through in my house, I met you outside. Here are the rules. Do not offer advice unless it's given. Do not make any negative comments or you're going to be escorted out of the home. My mom did that. Just that. All of that. All of the rules that I told her not to do. Minute she walks in, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> right? So I grabbed her hand and I walked outside and I reminded her of the rules. And I said, I will see you next week. Because right now I have to protect my wife yeah. and her mental state. Because that's priority. Well, and what you're saying, I, the amount of husbands that have no problem having conflict with their wives, but God forbid have one moment of contact conflict with their mothers... <laughs> Right, like, that's like a thing I hear a lot. Like, I, right, like, oh, I'm totally calm. I just don't like fighting with her. It's my mom, right? But like, also, like, I don't give a fuck. I'll fight with you all damn day. Right, it's like hard for them to adjust from being the son to the husband. Yeah. I think people need to start simplifying their lives. Right. Sp- mm-hmm. Relationships included. So by me having one woman that I'm dedicated and committed to, that means I have one woman to only make happy. I have one woman whose opinion matters to me the most as opposed to everyone else. So therefore, my job is very simple. If I have to choose you or anybody else, I'm going to go with you. Mm. So therefore, if anyone comes and do not respect our boundaries, they got to go. Because I'm going to sleep with you at night. I'm going to bed with you and I'm with you here 24-7. And I want you to feel supported because being a parent is, is new to the both of us. So the same way that I, w- I want to feel respected, I also want to ensure that you feel respected and you feel like I got your back 100%. Because it's the two of us forever. I have a business idea for you. Talk to me. I just, I don't know if what? you do this already, <laughs> but I think coaching new dads mm. in their relationships. Here's how to make your wife not fucking hate you. <laughs> That's what I would call it. No, like truly, I, I really think that, like, like just everything that you're saying makes so much sense. Yeah. Like, and it's so simple and simplified. Simple say, for right? you, Nikki. Is there any way that we could um, accelerate this episode? Because my husband, I would like my husband to hear this tomorrow. <laughs> got it, got it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, but I like it. What you're talking about is like we do. We overcomplicate everything, and I want. I think that that is part of like Western culture, right? So like part of that is like. I think like culture here that we got some fucked up priorities. Yeah. <laughs> One hundred percent. It makes no sense to me. Like, how could you go all day without calling your wife or your partner? Right. Check in on how their day is or what do they need? I love working from home. It's the yeah. most amazing thing because in between sessions, I'm playing with my kids. I'm, I'm annoying my wife. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. Well, like, how do you Yo, annoy can we her? Go do your sessions. I'm <laughs> like, your- <laughs> they canceled. It's just you and I for the next 45 What's, minutes. <laughs> what is your favorite way to annoy her? Oh, man. Ooh. So my wife is very low key, relaxed, and I'm always turned up, the loud one. Um, so I'm really into physical touch. I'm a physical guy. Like, I'm a big guy, right? So most of the time, just to make my daughter laugh, I'll, I'll pick up my wife. I'll throw her in the air. I'll toss her around. Or I'll just hug her. Or I'll jump on her back. And she gets so annoyed. But my daughter's cracking up. So she can't be too mad because my, da- my daughter's excited. Yeah. So me, like, it's, it's, it's all about, like, spending that quality time together. And a lot of times, like, we tend to struggle with that as well because we have two kids, right? Mm-hmm. She works in the morning and I'm watching the kids. Then my sessions are mainly at night. So it'll be like 11 o'clock. I'm like, all right, let's go do a 10-minute conversation of, about our day. Let's connect, right? And a lot of times we're too tired for that. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I call the grandparents. We're on our way. I'm not asking you. 
grandparents ask for kids all the time. <laughs> They've been asking. They're here. Why are they with me every day? Where are you? So I bring them and we go to dinner. We have a blast as often as possible. Mm. We go sit outside or I make dinner. We s- sit at the table. We talk. We watch shows. We, we just try to enjoy each other's company as much. How'd you meet your wife? Ooh. Yo, yes. I put this, this, is, this, is just be a, about me. this is just going to be a personal, this is a personal interview about you. <laughs> so I was a personal banker, which I did really well. Because, okay. again, psychology. Right. right? I, the way that you greet a person helps you close the deals because they trust you and you're building that rapport. So she walked in and asked. She was working at, at, at the store nearby and they needed change. It's a hundred dollar bill and she wanted a hundred singles. So I'm like, that's too easy. That's too easy. I'm like, you going to the strip club? Can I come with you? I'm like, that's too easy to start a right. conversation. I'm like, that's good. thank you, Lord. That, that's, that's very simple. And from that day on, we've just been rolling to, wow. together ever since. The thing that I, the thing that sounds like it's so important is that you have fun together. And I think so often there's this message of like, put the kids first, you know, make sure put you're. Put the kids but first. But you gotta put your relationship <laughs> first. It's the foundation. Exactly. And it sounds like you're, you, the two of you are so good at that and you still have fun together. Yeah. Which is so essential. We get so drudged yeah. in the shit of things. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> we're, we're going to Panama ne- 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 next month for a retreat that I, that I was hired for. I can't swim, so I'm very afraid of the water, right? Well, it's valid. If you can't swim, that's pretty fucking scary. My wife loves the water. <laughs> she wants to go the deepest end and all of that. She can swim, but she can only save herself. <laughs> so she can save me. <laughs> yeah. So for years, she's been trying to get me to do things in the water. So we created a bucket list of what we're going to do while on vacation. And we always have an agreement. We can't say no to each other while on vacation. We can accommodate, meaning I can move away from my 0% and she can move away from her 100% request and we can meet 70, 70, 30, 60, 40. In our relationship, the word no does not exist because that's a form of rejection. Wow. She played me, <laughs> right? She said she wants to get on a boat in the middle of the ocean <laughs> And push jump you in. <laughs> and you were like, absolutely, I love water. Right. <laughs> just can't no, say no. Just can't talking no. about it, I'm anxious. Oh, you can use a life vest. I don't trust that shit. Yeah, no. <laughs> right? So she no, said. No, you're a big guy. I wouldn't trust that shit either. Yeah, no. Don't I don't trust that shit. You ever seen those? Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. And she said, so let's compromise. I'm like, what do you have in mind? She said, we can parasail. I'm like, uh, so you're saying <laughs> water and height? I don't even like roller coasters. So I can either jump in in the middle of the ocean and die, or I could be upstairs, but I can close my eyes. Right. Right? And I can hold on very tight. And scream at the top of your lungs. Exactly. So we're doing parasailing. Good for you. You know, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't want to So the main point in all of this is that for a lot of couples, they think that you need to have the same desires or like the same things that your partner does. Mm -hmm. That's actually very untrue. If you want someone that thinks like you, that view the world the same way as you just marry yourself, right? right? You don't need a partner for that. Mm-hmm. But the key is learning how to make the time you spend together count, mm. right? So even though she want, she want to do stuff in the water and I'm uncomfortable with it, but we found a medium where we can have a positive experience. Even though I'm going to shit myself afterwards, <laughs> but I can be present yeah, and right. enjoy part of it with you. And eventually, I'll conquer my fear. But right now, I'm scared. But I'm going to do it. And isn't that all relationships? This is fucking scary. Fucking terrifying. And would take... Okay, so we have to ask a few listener questions or people will never forgive us. Although I want to talk about your marriage all fucking day long. (laughs) We're going to keep interviewing you. Matt's going to get home and his wife is going to veto this entire episode. (laughs) Okay. Um, How to not punish my now husband for my ex's infidelity? Ooh. So they're realizing this was not my partner now. Mm-hmm. It's so you have in the past, but I'm having, we're going to call it trauma, muscle memory, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it. So symptoms of infidelity, right, of a traumatic experience can be present up to five years. So an infidelity is ad, 
is as impactful as being in war for five years. They show the same PTSD symptoms. So right now, this this partner is experiencing all of these symptoms, and it's affecting the the way that the relationship is. When his phone rings or when he goes somewhere, you automatically get flashbacks. You automatically get triggered. So the right answer is you need to go to therapy to process all of that. But if that's not an option, label the elephant that's in the room. Hey, lately, I've been feeling very triggered when these behaviors are done. And I know you're not, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just that due to my past, due to the infidelity that I've experienced, I've, I've become hypersensitive or hyper anxious to certain things. I'm working through it. I'm trying. Can we talk about ways that you can support me in that process? Oh, and there I love you go. That. Okay. How to handle a spouse who once cheated and is now anxious that you're cheating? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to, to me I, i'll even say that the partner that did not cheat yet is actually en- enjoying that right right oh. like I'm, I'm i'm giving you a taste of your own medicine right so do you really want to help them or you're just saying that Ooh. right oh but a, a, again to me is if infidelity has happened you guys need to go through therapy to process that and make sense of it because if you've never identified the cause of it, it's more likely going to repeat again. Mm. And if he's extra hyper vigilant about you cheating, probably he's still cheating himself. I was thinking that, but I didn't want to say yeah. it. But I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Glad you said. I am not cheating. How dare you? How dare I? Um, have you guys ever been rec- been recognized in the streets? Yes. Yeah. How's that experience for you? <laughs> First of all, I love this random question. It's awkward and uncomfortable. I had a weekend where I was recognized twice. Mm. One time, someone took a picture with me. Okay. That was uncomfortable. And then the second time, I was out and like drinking. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, I guess I got to tone it down a little bit, right? <laughs> like, I guess I got to chill out. Uh, but yeah, it's real uncomfortable, I would say. Yeah. M? Me as well. I, <laughs> I can't right. stand it. Tell us. Yeah, like you're, no. you're just walking and people just walk up to you. Yo, talk to Mac. <laughs> Yo, what up, man? <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> How are you doing? Hey. Or, or a couple approach you. Or they start telling you about their problems. Like, I'm with my kid. I'm pushing a stroller. Like, yeah. it's really weird because you don't know who's of the right mind, yeah. who's of the wrong mind. Well, it's, it's I, thing, I don't like it. We've talked about before of like parasocial relationships, like feeling like you have a relationship with someone because they see parts of you online, right? So like because they see parts of you on social media, you feel connected. I mean, it's the reason why we get so pissed when celebrities get cheated on, right? Like I don't actually fucking know these people, <laughs> but like I really, really seem to care about. I Kayla. feel very connected to them for some reason. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Taylor Swift has made an entire career about it, and she's goddamn brilliant because it's so smart. But there is this part of parasocial relationships where that like. I do feel connected to you. I feel like I know you. You've shown parts of yourself to me. But they don't see all parts of us. Correct. And I think the tough thing is that, you know, when you're putting this information out there, you're so vulnerable and people can see those parts of you, but you don't have that on the other end of it, right? Like that the connection is not the same yeah. on the other end of it. And so that's what I think is really complicated too, is because you have people coming up and you're like, I have no idea <laughs> what's going on for you, but you probably know my entire backstory. Correct. But I, but I, you know what happens for me though, is I feel the urge to like prove myself. Like, right, like oh, well, thank you for following and thank you for listening and I'm glad it resonates. Please like me in person too. <laughs> and I feel this like, people pleaser part of me that's like this massive fucking undercurrent of my entire life <laughs> like me like me love me please god i have mommy and daddy issues um <laughs> mine's i'm gonna fucking run and hide in a corner yeah. please please don't look at me mine was um i need to assess f- for risk and safety uh, right now like who well, are you what do you want right. like okay <laughs> Great question, though. Yes, okay. That's a good, that's a good, good question. I liked that this interview turned the other way. <laughs> Tell us more about what we it on okay. um, <laughs> Listen, here's a basic one. How to move forward together successfully. <clears throat> I feel that as therapists, we're always saying just, just go to therapy. 
and that's overplayed <laughs> with and, and I'm tired yeah. of it. Like, take a stand. Like, people are coming to us for information and a lot of times we play that neutral route. Yeah. Eh, I don't really know. You need to go to therapy, therapy and process that. But let's say you're not ready for therapy, mm-hmm. right? Have a conversation. Hey, what happened? What caused it? What did I miss? What was missing? And moving forward, how do we ensure that this don't happen again? Let's check in more often. Let's talk more often. Let's communicate about what's not working. And also, I need time to get to a place where I trust you. So these are my boundaries. I want access to your phone twenty four seven. I want you to share your location with me at all times. At any time of the night, I can come and pick up your phone and go through it. And you have to respect that. I can also show up at your job. Um, actually, he works with you. Okay, I would prefer if you ask to be moved to a different office because I'm uncomfortable with the fact that you guys work together. Right. So it's about having these hard conversations, but be very clear of what you need to hear. These are what I need to hear. And I can't put a time frame on it. Right. I was just going to ask. I get that a lot of time. I was going to be two years. Yeah. Well, I was three months. And I was just going to ask, like, okay, let's say a partner needs to like look through their phone in order to heal. How long is it really dependent on how long it takes for that partner to heal? Is it, is there a point where it's being dragged out? Like, is there, you know, what kind of boundaries would you suggest putting around that? Great question. You do the crime, you do the time. It's, it's that simple, right? For some, it might be faster. For, for others, it may, not be, it may not be as quick. One day, you could trust your partner and then something happened and it triggers the hell out of you and you're throwing a chancleta at them, <laughs> right? It's all part of the healing process. Okay. So you cannot try to limit someone's recovery process or, mm-hmm. or tell them what's acceptable and what's not. Well, it's been two years and you're still going through my phone. Mm. Well, the first two months, I was going through it every day. Now it's randomly or whenever I think mm-hmm. of something or whenever I have a nightmare, mm-hmm. right? So to me, there's really no time frame. Just again, be open-minded, be available, and show support to your partner. Like you cause them a lot of harm. Mm -hmm. So if they say, hey, I need to go through your phone, I will sit right next to you. Here you go. I'll rub your back while you go through it. And I remind you, I love you. I'm here. I'm sorry again. You know, this was a time where our relationship was not up to par. And I made the wrong decision. I'm recommitted to you. And whatever you need to accept that and believe that, I am willing to do. I like earlier you talked about, like when I had said, like, what was this model to you? How did you learn this? And you talked about, like, taking responsibility and getting information. Our parents' generation didn't get to log on to Instagram and have free content from people that charge three hundred fucking dollars an hour, right? right? Like, <laughs> my, like my parents didn't get, like, get on YouTube and have free access to experts in doing this, right. right? Like, we live in a generation where you do have. I understand therapy is not accessible and affordable or safe for a lot of people, mm-hmm. right? Especially if you're looking for a culture competent therapist, there's not enough of it. There's so many different things of reasons why you wouldn't seek that care, but. There's a lot of information and personal responsibility we can take ourselves facts. to fucking grow yeah. and heal and do this shit. Big facts. Big facts. <laughs> Nothing okay. else to add. <laughs> that was a complete with, sentence. I want to fucking hang out with you all day. All right, but alas, we cannot because people stop listening apparently after 40 minutes. <laughs> so we will end for today. How? This is all wait, we show. Wait, 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 wait. We have to do calling bullshit. Oh, fuck. I'm so sorry. Nikki. So we yeah. do something on our show. I saw Nikki write it down, but I can't see it. So I just knew what she was writing down. <laughs> I, that's what I hoped for. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um, so we do something on our show where anytime we have a guest on, they call bullshit on something in their field. Something that, you know, people believe that you want to call bullshit on. Anything that you want to myth bust. Oh, I got way too many. You can throw a few out if you want to. Jeez. Okay. I know. Let's see. Who, who, who do I want to go at? Do I want to go at the <laughs> self-help culture that creates a bunch of nonsense all day? I am tired of seeing people selling packages mm. about how to get your husband or how to get married in the next six months. Or you got it. In one year, I got my ring and I can teach you how to do so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the core requirements of a long, healthy relationship is deep friendship. 
you can build that in six months or a year you don't even know who your partner is Mm -hmm. at that time period it has been shown that those with a higher rate of divorce or those that get married within three four years of knowing each other Wow! because you're in the i'm in love with you face that that's when your brain is releasing chemicals that's making you enjoy being around that person liking that person where they touch you it's magical (laughs) that fades yeah (laughs) that doesn't last yes it does that that doesn't last especially you add in sleep deprivation and children yes i'm gonna be honest i have never seen those packages but now that i know they're out there i'm gonna find them (laughs) they're like a subscription package yeah no i'm just gonna get mad at them in my head and then turn off social media but (laughs) you're right it's bullshit right selling any type of controlled like you cannot have like relational depth without two people being in a relationship. Correct. You don't trick people into being with us. Correct. I love when you do that wrist yes. motion and when you talk about relating. And secondly and lastly, right? Just to keep it short, we need to be very mindful of who we get information from. Mm. Social media is great because it allows a space where everybody can share stuff. Mm-hmm. But you also need to be able to decipher what makes sense and what is just a market a marketing tactic mm-hmm. right so i always ask if you were to have open heart surgery would you want a surgeon or would you want someone that watched the surgeon <laughs> someone that had open surgery done to them as well or someone that read about it or uh-huh. s- or someone that survived it mm-hmm. what would you want a surgeon right? definitely a surgeon yeah. so it's someone who's been doing it for a while right has the credentials. i don't want even i want like a serious fucking surgeon. someone who is it has been in a lot of hearts <laughs> right. correct <laughs> yeah so a lot of times when it comes to relationships and love which is choosing a partner is one of the biggest decisions you're going to make in life we tend to overlook that and just go to wherever they are saying certain things that are laced with trigger terms just for you to agree with what they're saying, mm. right? They use certain key terms that are not that are not defined, but allow you to make sense of them yourself. So therefore, you're putting yourself in what they are saying, thus creating this fake rapport as if what they're saying is true. Like we need to be very careful of who we receive information from, and we need to start checking credentials. What qualifies you to do this job? What qualifies you to offer these perspectives? Stop talking at people and start talking people through Mm. their issues, right? Third, last one, I promise. No, we love it. Therapy is to deal with the past and coaching is to deal with the future. Who the (laughs) hell? What are we talking about? I can talk about life coaches all fucking day, right? Therapy encompasses everything. Right. At times, there are some of us where our theoretical approach is, let's talk about your past and let's make sense of it. Others is more present terms, right? Solution focus. And by being solution focused, you're also um, preparing for the future. This whole concept that ther- therapy is for the past and coaching is for the future. That's untrue. All right. That's some bullshit. Respect my profession. There yeah. it is. There Check it is. Check the student loans. <laughs> <laughs> We're submitting for credentials. Though. Oh, man. Oh, that's good. God damn it. All right, Mac. This was incredible. You're incredible. Thank you. I don't think we've ever, the only person that we have ever said we're to have back on again is terry fucking real and i think you might be the second person 100 i would say we'd have on again and everyone knows like, and you're gonna have to come in person and you're gonna have to come in person <laughs> you got right. you, you <laughs> to do it again where can people find you yes yeah, so you can find me on instagram as talk to mac underscore therapist talk to alk the number two mac mac underscore therapist if you're in new york city and Jersey, and you're looking for cu- couples therapists, I'm actually on the Gottman cert- certification track, mm-hmm. hoping to become one of the first four black males. Oh my Gottman God, Gottman cer- cer- certified therapist. You can find me at therapiesforeveryone.org, which is my private practice where we specifically work with people of color and couples of color to provide evidence-based relationship therapy. Amazing. This was incredible, Mac. Thank yes. you, Thank you so for having me, much. Yo, you guys are dope. This, I'm going to go on record again. This <laughs> might be the most fun podcast I've done so far. Hey, 
Fuck yeah, we're here for a good time, not for a long time. All right. Um, <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed today's episode, we always ask you to rate, review, subscribe, five stars, unless you hate it, then maybe you could just exit out on that tab. Um, <laughs> please send over to a friend, a loved one. You know you got Aunt Susie who needs to hear this. Or a partner. A partner, oh. if you want your partner to listen to this. Your partner needs to listen to this, especially for all those women postpartum. All right. We love you. Thank you for being here today. And don't forget that to grow yourself, you got to know yourself. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.